All season long, we've been asking you for the best in local brewing. Today, we present the Guzzly Award. When I look ahead in 2023, these are some of the trends I'm starting to see. Oh, very mysterious. He's Robert Zarco, Joe Six Packs in France. I'm Glenn Mack now. We're at the Ship Bottom Blendery and Barrel House in Swarthmore, the season finale of What's Brewing. What's Brewing is brought to you in part by Monco Makers Passport. Download your free digital pass and sip your way through Montgomery County. And by the Conchahawken Brewing Company, the perfect place for your holiday gathering. Reach out today at events at conchahawkenbrewing.com. Hey, welcome to What's Brewing. It is our season finale. I'm Glenn Mack now. As we told you last week, my partner Joe Sixpack up and moved to France. We will be checking in with him during the episode. Very happy to be hosted by our pal Robert Zarko. Ship happy bottom. to be here. Thank you so much. Thank you for having us. And uh, as we start today's show, what we're going to do is we're going to focus in on what you say is kind of a big trend that's happening right now. Light bodied crafted pilsners. Tell me what you know. Yeah, we're starting to see more people transition from the hazy IPAs, the big adjuncted stouts, to these lighter beers. Um, they're looking at beers that taste more like beers than these <laughs> things that you have the milkshake IPAs and yeah. strawberries and pina coladas. So they're looking for real beer. When I was out at the Great American Beer Fest, there were some breweries that just specialize in lagers and pilsners, and they were so crowded, and the beer was exceptional. Dennis Leary, the comedian, used to do a, a, a stand-up bit on why can't I get coffee-flavored coffee. So what you're telling me is now people just want... Beer-flavored beer. All right, so you make one. Yes. You make yes. a lot of interesting beers. Yeah. But among that, you make a light, pil light pilsner? Yes. Tell me do, about it. We do the uh, Surf Czech Pilsner, which is a traditional Czech Slovakian pilsner. It's lights 5%. Um, it's about the hops. It has size hops in it. It's just drinkable, uh, very crushable. Why are you not pouring it at this time? Oh, I'm sorry. I have to do that. Yeah. You know, I'm new to this co-hosting yeah. on the show. This is so. our beer swap segment. The word swap is built right in. Sorry about that. All uh, right, that's okay. Go. I'm Stand looking forward to it. You guys make such good stuff. Thank you. So you get a lot of notes yeah. with the hops and the grains. Mm -hmm. and, and it's clean. It's crisp. Exactly. It's really nice. Something you could drink all day. I was going to say, Eagles, we plan on a late season going into the playoffs. Here Hopefully. we go. They Tailgate look good. special, look good pal. This year. I like it, as always. I like your stuff. All right, so here's what I brought you. This is a Schilling Beer Company, not related to Kurt. Um, Petran 11 Degree Lager. These people are out of New Hampshire. And this is made with all Czech source ingredients. How about that? A little bit, uh, little bit darker, kind of a copper-colored one. Um, Cheers. Yeah, here's to you. Uh, maintains the tr traditional, I am not going to say this correctly, Polomatvi character that they love so much in this style of beer. Uh, light toasted bread, honeysuckle, light floral hoppiness. What do you think? I, 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 I your skeptical it. nose. I yeah, mean. I am getting that. I get the, the different smell in the nose, so I'm getting some different presence of these like elements this. you talked about. Yeah. I actually like this. I've never had this before. Uh, very nice. And we had a couple other, you brought a couple others. What are we looking at? Yeah, I have the uh, Russian River Intinction. Um, this is a barrel aged Pilsner. I actually never had this one, but it was suggested um, by the bottle shop at 320 Market. Oh, very good place in media. Yeah. Uh, they actually have one in Swarthmore down the road. Oh, too. well, who knew? Two locations. There you go. Oh, that cork just fell off the table. Sorry about that. It's your table. <laughs> yes. All right, so this one's a little more uh, citrusy. Right? This yeah. One, yeah, a little different. But and nice. there's a little funk in it. There's yeah. uh, the bread and mice mm -hmm. yeast I'm picking up right away. Okay. Uh, but I like it. And uh, in talking to Joe Sixpack about this, he kind of said what you said, which is American pills have often been over hopped, uh, a little bit bitter. Even like a, a Victory Prima Pills, which is a very good beer, 
is a much hoppier beer. And that was a beer that kind of introduced me to craft beer back in 1993 or is 1995. Is that right? Yeah. That was your entry? Yeah, it was, uh, we actually had a software company that I worked for, it was right next door. So I used to roll over kegs all the time, Bill and Ron, and I got to wow. introduce the Premium Pills And look that. what it led to. Exactly. Oh, that's very cool. Yeah. Anyway, it's a nice beer, but now the move, as you said, seems to be toward less hoppy, more refreshing, lighter, not light, but lighter beers with a lot of flavor, mm -hmm. maybe not as much body, but they got some sharpness to it. Exactly. Okay. Good Easy stuff. to drink. All right. Our social media question of the day, because this is our last show for the year, and we wish everybody in advance a happy new year, was your beer resolutions for the year. Let me, uh, I, I will uh, give you some of the ones that people mentioned. Andrew Pope said, and I like this, no more chasing random trends like insert sexy hop that kids love here, IPA, and rather develop a deeper appreciation and consistency for a well-designed beer. He said, I'm not saying don't try things new or randomly or throw weird stuff in a beer, but pay more attention to what you're doing and go with the basics, which... Brew the beer for the beer and just don't go to yeah, get a one-hitter. Maybe speaks to that. Mm -hmm. Michael Brzezinski said, uh, and you've got your place uh, ship on down the shore. Yes. So let me ask you what he says here. My hope is that the ridiculously restrictive brewery laws in New Jersey get repealed and breweries there are given the same opportunity to succeed as the wineries in the state and the breweries in every other state. What's he talking about? I totally agree. They put restrictions on how many events we could have, social media, actually First Amendment rights that they're taking away from us by not letting us promote different things. All right, so we would like to see New Jersey enter the 21st century before it ends at some point. Uh, Stouthearted said, my beer resolution is to try to expand my footprint and visit breweries a lot longer drive than a Saturday day visit. Would be nice. We had several of those people who, who want to trade. Uh, beer Whisper says, I want to continue traveling, discovering new breweries, especially international ones. I plan to visit just six back in France next spring. Maybe That's I'll, awesome. I'll That'd get be my good chance. trip. Uh, the mayor says, my New Year's resolution is to teach my Labrador retriever to bark once for IPA, twice for Pilsner, three times for Lager. I like to be surprised with my beer. <laughs> That's awesome. You have a lovely dog here. Where'd she go? Roo. Come here. <whistles> well, we can't wake her. Come here. Come here, puppy. Come here. I'd give you something to eat, but uh, that's gone. Can we get you in the shot? We got the puppy in the shot? You, she is a sweetheart. That's the, uh, that's the local? Yeah. She's a resident pup? Yep. All right. Coming up, we're going to check in with our pal Joe Sixpack in France and award our Guzzlies for the best and greatest in beer in the Delaware Valley in 2022. He's Robert Zarco. I'm Glenn Mack. Now we're at Ship Bottom in Swarthmore on What's Brewing. So, what do you want to do today? Today, I want to run. I want to ski. Thank you. I want to see a show. <laughs> I want to play. I want to eat, like a lot. I want to sleep in a hotel. Can we do all that? We can do all that and more. Welcome back. Now, although it looks like Joe Sixpack and I are shoulder to shoulder, we are 6,000 miles apart. He has abandoned us and moved to France. Joe Sixpack, what is Christmas time like over in France? Uh, lots of markets uh, in town here. Uh, very quaint, uh, you know, beautiful lights and trees and so on. They really do Christmas up very well here in France. It's a lot of fun. And of course, uh, They've got Christmas beers all over the place. Uh, right now, I've been enjoying some of the Belgian Christmas beers that come down here to Ren. Uh, this is one of I found. Uh, I hope I can get that on there. This is Bush Noel. Some mm -hmm. of my beer, my beer friends will uh, you probably can't see it. Some of my beer friends will uh, be familiar somewhat with that beer. It's in America. It's called Scaldus Noel, but that Bush name you can't use that in America. <laughs> so, uh, uh, big strong Belgian Christmas beer. All right, very nice. Now, although you are over in France, what we are going to do today is we're going to do the Joe Six Pack Essentials. A little bit away from there, the second state, the Diamond State, small wonder, Delaware. What do you got? Oh, it's the first state, Glenn. <laughs> the first there'll state. Be a Excuse me. There'll be a poll at that slide. Well, I, I don't want to insult anybody in Delaware. 
<laughs> so, well, in Delaware, and, uh, and we know we have a lot of viewers uh, of what's brewing down in Delaware. Uh, we, this is a nod to them and, and to anybody. You should go down and visit all of Delaware's great breweries. And here's three that I think are the essentials. Dogfish Head's obviously the one. You got to go there. They're an original uh, East Coast double IPA, that 90 minute double IPA. Go there and get it on draft. It's a, it's a can't miss beer. Uh, there's a, a really great, not too far from there uh, at Dogfish, is a place called Dewey Beer Company. It's in Harbison, Delaware. This is one of those places where beer geeks love to line up for their uh, sour beers in particular uh, in their Secret Machine uh, series. I, I would definitely go to De Dewey Beer Company. And finally, uh, Wilmington Beer Company in Wilmington. Uh, it's housed in a 100-year-old former chemical chemical laboratory, uh, but with spacious indoor seating. This is a really beautiful, cool looking building. A lot of fun there. And if you're going to go to Wilmington, I also highly recommend Stitch Brewing in uh, the, the brew pub in downtown Delaware. Uh, really fine spot. Uh, check out there in Delaware. It's great. The project for the winter. Okay. All yes. season long on this show, we have asked our followers through social media by the way, I am at Real Glenn Macno. He is at Beer Underscore Radar. The show is at What's Brewing. Um, to give us uh, kind of their thoughts, we set up a series of awards. We call them the Guzzlies. We <laughs> actually are handing out awards for it. I think we're going to have a picture of the plaques that we're going to be giving to the winners. Four nominees in each category. Let's go through them again. We appreciate everybody who checked in and voted and nominated. I'll name the winner, Joe Sixpack. Kind of give me your thought on it. Okay. Uh, let us start with best live music, Johnny Brendan's. Yeah, I can't miss there. It's a great spot. It was. It almost feels like that bar was made for live music, uh, and that the the great beer that they have on tap there is is an added plus. All right, best beer garden, and we've done some shows there. Warwick Farm, terrific. Yeah, the, uh, they, they've really done up that place. A uh, little cold for a beer garden right now, but uh, I highly recommend checking that place out. Uh, you can spend a fun afternoon there. All right. Most dog friendly. I did not rig the voting. Conch Hawk and Brewing Company, the Conchie Tap Room, where we always welcome dogs. Yeah, the Conchie Tap Room is, you know, you got to go there. And, uh, you know, I don't know, you know, what, whether dogs will really enjoy the scene as much as the humans enjoy the dogs. But yeah, uh, at any rate, I love going drinking beer with dogs. I know you do. Not kids, but yes, dogs. <laughs> it's exactly. Yeah. All right. This was an important one. The best local stout. And I know you love this one. Sly Fox O'Reilly Stout. I was taken by surprise on this one because, you know, over the years, we've seen so many huge, big stouts from various breweries that you and I have enjoyed uh, on the show. Uh, O'Reilly's has been around for a long time, and it just shows you how what a quality product that is, that people recognize a classic Irish stout as being the best stout in the Philadelphia area. Yeah, it was really nice. Most romantic bar or brewery. I guess named in honor of your wife, Teresa's in Wayne. <laughs> a spot I really like, by the way. Food's great, too. It's true. Uh, Mrs. Sixpack and I do enjoy Teresa's. Haven't been there for a little while. Uh, great beer selection uh, in the heart of Wayne and uh, outstanding beer and food. Best lager. And I will say that I do believe the ballot was stuffed in this, which is fine. The lads from Kenwood Light saw that this was going on, implored their loyalists to vote. <laughs> they came out early and often, and Kenwood Light wins the best lager. Hey, uh, that's a tribute to them. Well, there are a lot of fans of Kenwood out there. You see it in almost every beer distributor you go to in a lot of bars. Uh, it's a classic light beer uh, with good flavor, so good for that. Most creative beer list, Imprint Brewing in Hatfield. We did some shows there. It is incredible, that whole wall of all those different styles of beer. They're all over the place there. And, you know, we talk about the oddball flavors that come from Imprint, but do not miss their classic beers. They make some wonderful lagers, really a good variety. And lastly, congratulations, Monk's Cafe. We looked for what place has the most diverse, interesting crowd, something that you and I have talked about. It's important to go out and be with people not like yourself. Congrats to Monks in Center City for that one. 
it's nice to see a long-term uh, stalwart in the center city beer scene uh, get that kind of recognition. Uh, you never know who you're going to run into at Monks, and of course, uh, the beers the the beers are not not matched by anybody. No. So congratulations to all of those winners. We're going to be getting plaques out to you. We hope that you post them proudly on your wall. All right, Joe Sixpack, this is our last show of the year. I want to wish you and yours a Merry Christmas over in France and just tell you that next year in May, I'm going to come crash with you. That's great news. Uh, bring that hat. That'll go over well over here. That's very seasonal, <laughs> but yeah, I will. All right. Hey, when we come back, Robert Zarko and I will discuss what's trending next year in beer. This is What's Brewing. Glenn Mack now here with Andrew Colligan, beer genius from Kachak and Brewing Company. Andrew, let's run down some of our core beers with some exciting new looks. Start with Type A. Our number one selling beer. Big citrus hop notes. Type A is our classic American IPA. Life Coach Hazy IPA. Hazy, bright, and juicy. The perfect beer for all day, every day. Puddler's Row. Uh, maybe the best thing to sell in the country. Back-to-back -back silver medals at the World Beer Cup. Backpack beer. Uh, the newest addition to our year-round lineup. Citrus and spicy with a refreshingly clean finish. Pack a few and enjoy the view. And everybody loves Ring the Bell. My go-to. Smooth, easy-drinking lager that's perfect before, during, or after the game. This one's out of here! Oof. Thank you, Harry. All exciting choices. Enjoy them all and a whole lot more at all of our Conshohocken Brewing Company locations. And wherever beer is sold. So, what do you want to do today? Today, I want to run. I want to ski. Thank you. I want to see a show. <laughs> I want to play. I want to eat. Like a lot. I want to sleep in a hotel. Can we do all that? We can do all that and more. Welcome back to What's Brewing. We're in Swarthmore at the Ship Bottom Blendery and Brew House. Robert Zarko is here. Always nice catching up with Joe Six back in France. We're going to continue to do that, and we'll do it as we move into the next season. We'll tell you a little bit about that coming up. But since this is our last show of the year, we are trying to project what we foresee in 2023. So if we look into our crystal ball, what do we see for next year? We talked earlier about light-bodied Pilsners, but you're saying not just light body, you see a growth in? Low calorie, uh, great tasting beers. Okay. Uh, since the pandemic, uh, during the pandemic, everybody was drinking everything. Since the pandemic, it seems like people are more health conscious. So we're seeing a move and a transition towards this style. Uh, we developed the Little Shack IPA, which is a 4% IPA. It's 85 calories and 1.29 carbs. So very light and refreshing. I'm skeptical as to whether I will oh. find any taste in this beer. I think you're going to which a lot is of the challenge, yeah. right? Yeah. When you do something like this, exactly. But our brewing team did an awesome job with this, and you get the IBA, IPA presence in this. Um, you'll pick up the notes right away. Yeah, I could drink this. Yeah, yeah and it's I something you drink all day. Yeah, which is in fact one of. One of the other trends, mm -hmm. since we're talking about trends that are, are kind of moving into the new year, one of the trends, I did some research on this. There has been a huge growth in day drinking on weekends. That I'm a huge fan of that. Yeah. If I could get all my drinking done and be in bed by 9 o'clock, that's all for me. All that's right. Awesome. So, so it, they are finding that, and again, everything is kind of post-pandemic. It really changed people's lifestyles in so many ways that people, as opposed to like, hey, let's go out Saturday night and drink. Mm -hmm. We're free during the day, we'll go out, we'll play a game, we'll do some other activity, and we'll drink beer all day, and then at night we'll just crash and watch Netflix. Exactly. It's beautiful. And so that's what you're seeing. Exactly. Okay, which also would follow up with your um, earlier set, which is kind of a move away from the high octane hoppy beers into stuff that's kind of crisper, crisper and clean. And light and crushable. Okay. Um, here are some of the other trends that supposedly you can expect in 2023. Bear with me. Okay. 
slushies and frozen drinks. And you, you did your slushies, right? Yeah, we do a lot of slushies, especially at the beach. So we have beach bags that people, they're like IV bags that go. At Lynn Villa or okay. Beer Garden, we do frozen hard well, cider. Well, you may want to be ready for the next trend here. You may want to get ahead of the curve here and go out and buy yourself a soft serve machine, which are now very big for breweries. This is apparently this trend is starting in Virginia of all places. And you ser serve soft serve booze in a cone such as hard cider. So they take the hard cider, they make it like into a sorbet. We've had frozen margaritas, yeah, right? That's jumping a shark for me. That's a little too Is much. that right? Yeah. Okay, well, the machine turns alcohol into frozen treats. It's known as below zero. uses some kind of binding agent to turn the cider into a thing. Yeah, that's not for me. Okay, not for him. I would try it. Um, okay, also, a growth in CBD drinks, which has, I guess, started a little bit. What do you know about that? I know some breweries do it. Um, there's different federal laws compared to state laws, so it's very tricky to get into this. Um, I've done some CBD drinks where if I have a coffee and I'm too caffeinated, I'll have a CBD drink uh, and it kind of mellows me out. So they do work, they do help you out. Some people are doing it, and again, there's a difference between CBD and THC. THC, legal in some states, not in others, but is it controlled, I don't know if it's a controlled substance, I don't want to speak what I don't know, but it's it's a little trickier. I don't know if you can infuse THC in a beer because it's all about the temperature you're burning the THC uh, uh, at. Anyway, more CBD drinks is another trend. Anything else you're foreseeing? Uh, just like I said, like the lagers, the slushies, and then the Good. Uh, low calorie beers. And we all look forward to a great 2023. Oh God, yeah. Can't wait. Yeah. Good. And everybody stay healthy. Uh, all right, we got one more segment to go. Let me just say this before we get to it. This is our final show for the season. We really appreciate our viewers uh, as we have now for five seasons. We appreciate uh, NBC Sports Philadelphia for allowing us to put this junk on the air. And we're going to be back for, what did we say, 36 episodes next year? I don't know that I can drink that much beer, but we hope you will be along with us as we do it. All right, coming up, we're going to talk to Brian Hink. He is the director of production uh, here at uh, Ship Bottom, and we're going to talk about their barrel projects, which seem like a lot of fun. With Robert Zarko, I'm Glenn Mack now. It's what's good. You don't have to go away to get away. Go and explore. Find the small businesses that make where you live a community. When you dine, choose homemade. On a free weekend, discover the great outdoors. And if it's brewed here, enjoy it with friends. Support small for an experience you won't find anywhere else. Make it local, make it Main Street, make it Motco. All right, welcome back. We are at Ship Bottom Barrel, uh, Brewery and Barrel House in Swarthmore, uh, along with Robert Zucker. I'm Glenn Mack, and I'm drinking one of my favorites always, the Hoppin' Hazy IPA, you know I've loved this beer, been coming here for a long time for this. You're all about the hazies. I am all about the hazies. Nice to be joined by Brian Hink, he is the director of production here. Uh, you guys got some great stuff going on with barrel aging, tell me a little bit about it. So yeah, we're here in Swarthmore at our barrel house and uh, right below us here in the cellar, uh, we've got a number of barrels going, aged a bunch of different projects, uh, a lot of saisons, some, uh, we got some nice funk, some Belgian beers coming out, um, you know, sours and whatnot. And then we have a number of uh, clean sour beers as well, where they're spirit barrel aged. So think like big stouts in like a bourbon barrel and those right, kind of so things. So let's, let's dive deep into it a little bit. When you say barrel aged, what I think is I'm taking an old bourbon barrel and I'm making beer in it. Is that what's going on or we have more than that? Yeah, I mean, not, not too dissimilar than that. So we'll take the, the, the barrels come from a distillery and so they're dumped and they're very fresh. Sometimes you get a little bit if you drain it. I might get a little bit of barrel strength uh, yeah. spirits coming out of that. And uh, then we, we age beer in there. And it's, it's, we typically do finished fermented beer in there. You can ferment in the barrels, but we'll put finished beer in there. And we'll age it to really extract these like, rich barrel characters from these, from these barrels. And so we're getting like, vanillins and oak, and you'll get a little char and like, smoke whiffs to it. And you get these like, really lovely notes to it. How do you know how to time it? Um, the beer tells us when it's ready. So we're targeting maybe six releases in a year, but it's really liquid dependent. So if, if the beer's ready to proceed, we'll move on with that project and uh, bottle it up and 
release it. All right, Brian, so you guys have some new releases, some very exciting releases, one that just dropped this week, very holiday oriented, tell me. Yeah, we're super soaked on this one. Uh, it's Little Coconut. Uh, Rob goes down to Puerto Rico usually every winter once again. Yeah, and we uh, donate to them for all the hurricane damage and everything else. So, so Coquito is a, more like a Puerto Rican style. Uh, like It's not an eggnog, but it's like their version of an eggnog. And so this beer is inspired by that. So it's called wow. Little Coconut. Super rich coconut characters to it. Uh, it's sweet. You get a nice little vanilla creaminess to it. Great holiday beer. Really good for the holidays here. So I have had coconut beer and enjoyed it. Is there anything, it's kind of off topic question, is there anything you have tried making with beer, making beer with it? You've decided like, that's not <laughs> um, There's so many things you can add to a beer that is just fun and work well. Uh, spices go well. Sometimes you can go a little too heavy on the spice notes and it's like, it's spicy. Uh, but there's such a versatile canvas to play with. I mean, you can just throw all these flavors at it and it just works great. So uh, I'm sure there's some things out there. But God, it's so much fun for you, though, to mix and match and, you know, be creative. Yeah, I know you have another one that's coming out, right? Yeah, so we have um, two other releases that close out the year. Uh, New Year's Day does not release on New Year's Day. It comes out just before that, right before Christmas. Uh, big, nice 9.5% uh, big stout. And then also Double Overhead. It is a uh, Imperial Triple IPA. We've been doing it for a number of years now. And uh, Galaxy and Citrus. So, I mean, can you get any more uh, like cool hops than that? So a big 10.4%. Very IPA. sexy hops in that. Oh, yeah. 10.4%. So we're, we're sitting home and drinking that. This is a good January. You're at home. Yeah. It's cold out. Yeah. Okay. Have a few of them. All right. Very nice. Uh, keg drop event. What's going on? Yeah, so uh, we started this in Beach Haven, New Jersey, where you had the fire company come. We put lights around a, around a half keg. We drop it at 7:59 for Irish New Year for families to come out. We're doing the same thing in Swarthmore. We're going to have a keg drop at 6:59. We're going to close down a treat, live music, and M1 at 11:59. So it should be a great event for families, live music, some food here, and uh, great beer. Great. All right. I got like a minute here to spare, Brian. Tell me a little bit about your beer history, how you got into it. How did you become who you are? I mean, I was a home brewer with a dream. I started brewing in my kitchen, uh, a couple five gallons at a time in a pot. And uh, started, uh, I got into the industry behind the bar, actually. I was a bartender and then I uh, just kind of kept growing, uh, growing throughout my career and taking on more and more responsibilities. And so I've been with Ship Bottom for uh, just over three months now and I'm, I'm loving every minute of it. Rob's built an incredible company here, and I'm so happy to be a part of it. It's a great, great company. And you keep the place on the shore going year, year round. round. Yeah, year round. Yeah. I and remember then Lynn Villa's open, you know, through December, and then we shut that down. That's such the a great spot. Love, love that, that spot. spot. Yeah, yeah. love that spot. All right. Uh, that's going to wrap it up. And as I said, this is our final show for the year, which I guess we... For some reason, we always end up at your place. The yeah, final show. Yeah, thanks for bringing here. bring me along for the ride. Well, I appreciate we appreciate that. your support as well. And uh, as I said earlier, we really appreciate the viewers who have made this so much fun. The people who correspond with us on social media at Real Glenn Mac now at Beer Underscore Radar at What's Brewing uh, PA. And we're going to be back next year with a whole lot of episodes and a whole lot of beer. Everybody, have a great holiday. Stay healthy, enjoy your beer, enjoy it in moderation. Guys, thank you so much for having us today. Cheers and happy holidays. We'll see you in January with some Joe Six Pack mixed in on What's Brewing. What's Brewing is brought to you in part by Monco Makers Passport. Download your free digital pass and sip your way through Montgomery County. And by the Conshohocken Brewing Company, the perfect place for your holiday gathering. Reach out today at events at conshohockenbrewing.com.